I'm Jim Key. I'll be your host tonight. We're here at the Joe Hogan State Fish Hatchery. Uh, this is our Tuesday live feed. This time we're doing uh, camp cooking. Uh, hook it and cook it. So we're going to put on a demonstration tonight with various different types of, of camping utensils that we can use to cook with. And let's introduce the chefs. This is JJ Gladden. He's the Aquatic Resource Education Coordinator here at the Lone Oak Hatchery. This is Will Hafner. He's an educator at Cook's Lake Education Center. And our sous chef working both sides is Curtis Gray, and he is the Archery in the Schools Program Coordinator. Let's start with what JJ is going to cook first. All right. So, you know, when we were thinking about what kind of uh, fish we could do and the different techniques, we really wanted to have a wide variety. A lot of people think about when they're thinking about, you know, camping, you think about roasting hot dogs on an open fire. Maybe you, maybe you know how to use a Dutch oven, maybe make some beans or some one pot meals. But we're going to show these techniques. We've got, uh, we got a Dutch oven going with some beans over here. We got a griddle set up on a camp chef, a fryer. That's what I'm going to use for my first dish is I'm gonna take a non-game species, something that a lot of people wouldn't think to use in cooking. We're gonna use silver carp. We've got them cut up into ribs, like you, uh, a lot of you might know about buffalo ribs. It's the same concept, and we're just gonna deep fry those here in this fire disc and pair it with the beans off the crock pot. Now that silver carp, is that that jumping fish? Yep, that is an aquatic nuisance uh, species and we don't really want them, so if we can teach people a delicious recipe, then maybe we'll get a few more out of the river. Okay, Will, talk about your first dish. All right, so JJ's gonna start with uh, a non-game species. I'm gonna start with a game fish. We're gonna start with a largemouth bass, and what we're gonna start with is a full pack. It's what you think of a lot of times when you're camping. We're gonna cook on the fire ring. We're gonna wrap the fish up in foil, uh, some vegetables, and we're going to be able to just put that to the side while we get ready to go for the next dish. Kind of just a set it and forget it kind of deal. What are you going to add to it as far as seasoning? And uh, we're going to season it up with just some Cajun spices and butter. If you see, there's lots of butter here. Butter makes everything better. So, are y'all ready to cook? I'm, re I'm always ready. Let's do it. All right. All right, JJ's gonna get some fish. I'll get some fish. And what's all this over here going into? Well, I think, um, you know, we'll probably do some fish tacos. Who doesn't like a good, uh, a, a good taco? A lot of people have them fried, but we're gonna do them uh, on the flat top over there, make it a little bit healthier. Cool. Right, I'm gonna take these and we're gonna dry them up real good. All right. How are you preparing your bass there? So we got a, a bass. Uh, it's already been scaled, taking the entrails out, taking the head off, and we're going to score it. We actually can take our knife, cut down a little bit into the meat. That way when we season it, the seasonings get into the meat. Do that on both sides. We're also going to cut up some lemon. Lemon goes really, really well with fish. So you always want to have lemon. And you can put anything you want in your full packet. Uh, you can do your vegetables with your fish. If you put it inside the, the body cavity, it will kind of help steam. But you can also just do separate full packs as well. So we'll get that cut up. Go ahead, JJ. Yeah, one thing, um, you know, you can see right here, it's a very white and flaky fish, but on the back side here, you've got a little bit of a membrane. That's one thing that you're gonna to wanna to take off. It'll reduce some of that gamey or muddy taste. So we're gonna go ahead and strip that off. And one thing you really wanna do when you're frying fish, one, you really want your oil to be hot. If your oil's not hot, then you're gonna get that oily, gummy taste, and, and nobody really likes that. Um, a really good temp that I like to go for is about 375. 350 works, but you start at 375, you put a bunch of fish in there, it's gonna drop. 
So you want to start off a little bit hotter and we're going to dry these up. You want it dry so your coating sticks really well. And then we're going to let it set for a little bit. Then we'll throw them in the fryer. What are you using for coating, JJ? Well, there are a ton of commercially made uh, seasonings out there. Louisiana, New Orleans, Zatarans. It's like they're all made in one state. I guess they like to uh, fry fish in, in Cajun country. But if you don't want to pick up one of these pre-made packages, you can just simply take regular cornmeal. Some people like to add a little bit of flour to that. But then you can season it with whatever your taste buds uh, like the most. You know, um, salt, pepper. You can always, you know, I mean, lemon pepper can go in. I always put in a little bit of Cajun seasoning just to get that kick. Paprika really helps out. Uh, the lemon pepper would work well because a lot of people put lemon on fried fish. So it's already in there and you're ready to go. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one of those prepackaged pre seasonings, we're gonna throw it in this uh, zip top bag, just shake it up, get it coated real well, let it sit for a little bit, and we'll be ready to fry. Periodically while we're doing this, we, uh, we turn in our recipes ahead of time and our IT crew over here, they're gonna take care of us and put a few of those up on the screen for you. And if we don't get to all the recipes today, we're definitely gonna send those out to you. So do not worry about it. But the fried recipe is pretty simple. It's kind of my set it and forget it in response to Will's foil packet because there's not a lot to do with fish once you got it in the fryer. You make sure that it's uh, not sticking and the temperature's up and that's about it. So we'll move on to our second dish after we get it in the fryer. We had about 305 uh, people registered for this program. So uh, we welcome any questions or comments. Come on, Will, gotta pick it up. All right. So <laughs> we got our bass, it's about ready now to go on the fire pit. Uh, we got some asparagus in here. We put some butter, lemon, uh, some rosemary to freshen it up a little bit more. And really, it's it's ready to go. We'll add a little bit more asparagus in there. Got to keep it healthy. Got to get our vegetables in there. So we'll just wrap it up. And you can do this with all sorts of different fish species. The biggest thing is you're going to want to try to get the scales off of them. Uh, remove the heads. Remove the gills. If you leave the gills in the fish, it's going to almost taint the fish. So you want to get, get the gills out of there. And we've got this, so we're going to go over here to our uh, fire ring. And we've actually got a rack here that's it's above the fire instead of going directly into the coals. This is a really hot fire. If we go directly in the coals, the fish, the vegetables are going to burn before it actually cooks. So we're going to go kind of indirect. And we'll let that cook all five to seven minutes, we'll come back and check it, and then flip it the other way. So that gives me time to go ahead and get started on our next dish. What will that be, Will? So I'm gonna, for my, my second dish, I'm going with my non-game species. A lot of people that bass fish or catfish have probably caught a freshwater drum before. Uh, what do you normally do with the drum? Yep, you throw it back. There is no reason to throw a drum back into the water. Uh, they really do make really good table fare. And what we're going to do, we're going to actually blacken drum. Drum is a relative of the redfish that you find in South Louisiana. Uh, a lot of times they'll blacken drum. And since we're talking about being on the bayou, being down in Louisiana, we're going to top that with some etouffee because for some reason in the ice chest, I found some leftover bait from catfish and we got some shrimp. So we're going to make a shrimp etouffee to go on top of that redfish or that drum. So that's what we're going to get started with next. I was fixing to say, you better not have brought an ocean fish in here. <laughs> <laughs> Back to your bass, Will. What's the advantage of cooking a fish whole like that? If you cook it whole, you're going to be able to keep the moisture in there, and plus the bones will also add flavor. So, and then you don't have to fillet it as well. A lot of people like the bones, so that's what we're going to go with, and you're done. So, how we doing over here? Get my drum. <laughs> get your drum. Get my drum. Golly, you cheater. 
All right, while we let that, uh, that breading set up, we're gonna move on to uh, what we have here is head and gut and scaled white crappie. We're gonna get these dried off and we're gonna season those very well. Um, one thing about when you're cooking whole fish is you know, you're, you're decreasing the area that you can get that seasoning on. So you really wanna lay it on there. And once we get these uh, out of the package, we're gonna do that. Once we season that up, we're gonna go with a little topping for our, for our fish tacos. I'm thinking a little cilantro lime slaw. I've got a pile of cilantro here. So something a little bit fresh, crisp to put on top of those tacos. And we'll get uh, working on that here in a second. How many have you got there you're gonna cook? Uh, I'm probably, I've got a few extra. This I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with six. Well, let's see, one, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> How many we got out here? I, I don't think anybody wants to eat Will's, uh, Will's redfish, so. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is uh, supposed to be a demonstration, but I've got a feeling that it's gonna break out into a competition. You just might be right. We got. Did you see all these fresh vegetables out there? Yeah, look at, the, these colors? Now, look, at, look at the presentation. Now, JJ may have gone with a lot of fresh vegetables, but when I'm camping, I don't want to bring the whole kitchen with me. So I let the stores do that for me and try to find shortcuts. Oh, uh, we got some packaged etouffee mix where all we've got to do is add some water. We're going to jazz it up with a little extra peppers and onions that we stole from JJ. And then we got some rice that's already been cooked that we can just heat up. So. You don't always have to start from scratch. I like to try to find some shortcuts, but still elevate this non-game fish species. Whoa, 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 you're talking about shortcuts. Not everything is super fresh. I did bring coleslaw <laughs> already cut up. And that's the thing, I, you know, especially camping and whether you're in the deer woods camping or on a riverbank when, uh, when, the, when the fish are biting, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do to make life easier, you know? After being out on a stand all day, you don't want to come in and then have to cook. You use a crock pot or some uh, slow cooker. So, like this coleslaw pre-packaged, I went ahead and made up this delicious mango salsa early. But there's, in the store, you can get a coleslaw dressing. Um, we're gonna throw it together, it's pretty simple you could make your dressing at home and just combine it when you get there. Like, there's a lot of techniques that you can use where you just kind of bring a near finished product with you when you're camping. Will, tell us what you do for the game of fish. Well, oh, I start fires. Here we go. No, I'm an educator at Potlatch Conservation Education Center down in Casco. That's enough. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but I'm an educator down there. Uh, we do all sorts of programs. Right now we're doing several virtual programs just like this. And also a lot of videos for the Virtual Nature Center. If you haven't been there yet, check it out. A lot of cooking videos, uh, outdoor skills, hunting, fishing. So that's a, just a really great uh, source. So now we're going to go ahead and we've got our drum. Uh, I've already cleaned it up. I can't see it. On a lot of bigger yeah, fish, there's what fish. people call the red meat or the bloodline. You want to take that out, which I already have. If you leave that in there, your fish is going to be really oily, really fishy. So I've taken that out, and we're just going to season it up with some of my favorite blackening seasoning and then set it to the side while we start working working on our A2 face. We had our first question, JJ. They want to know if you use uh, fresh or frozen mangoes. Oh, those are fresh mangoes. And uh, now I know why it costs so much for using frozen. But we really wanted to uh, win this non-competition. Right. So fresh is always best. Later on tonight, you'll be able to vote on who, uh, who did the best. So keep that in mind. Let me take an opportunity here to thank our crew. Mark Dyer running the camera. Morgan Raper with the boom mic, 
uh, Tara Bennett and uh, James Davison, Bo Davison, working behind the scenes on the uh, picking up questions and checking on that kind of stuff. My question is, is it ready yet? <laughs> oh, just a little patience. All right, so Meyer, Dyer, get in tight here. One thing that you really want to do when you're doing whole fish is you want to get some seasoning up in this cavity here. All right, that's one of the few places where you're having exposed meat that you can get seasoning on. Yeah, I'll put it on the skin here in a second, but you really want to get flavor right in here. And that's why I'm going to add, just for a little uh, wow factor, we're going to squeeze one of these limes in there and just leave it in for the cook. That's going to perfume through the entire fish. And here in a minute, we're going to be ready to put these on. We're going to go ahead, you know, and in the recipe, I listed out a, a lot of different spices, but since I'm kind of going with a uh, Mexican theme here, wow, Mexican spice right there on the counter. So why not, like Will's doing, pre-packaged over there, why not keep it simple? Take you a few shortcuts, makes it a lot more approachable when you're trying to do dishes like this at home. Will, how long will you let this, this bass cook on the in, indirect heat here? I, I have a feeling it's probably been close to five to seven minutes already, so it's about time to go ahead and flip it over, and then I'll probably give it a peek after about another 10 minutes. You're looking for it to just be flaky. Uh, you don't want it dried out or burnt, but just, just flaky and you know it's cooked. also have a, a crappie I'm going to throw on, and then a few other vegetables. I am. I'm coming at you. Throw some vegetables on. Uh, there's some tongs back there. Yes, sir. We can go ahead and get this fish flipped over. Want to make sure that's sealed up tight or you're going to lose all your juices right now on the fire. What do you have going over there now, JJ? I'm still oh. waiting to hear Don't worry. That sizzle is about to happen because we're going to take a temp on that grease. And we will be dropping some fish in to fry. What, so, do you, what, do you, what temperature are you looking for, JJ? I, I like 375. And if we're not there, I'm going to have to give it a little bump, but we got plenty of time. So in the uh, cooking process, when you're frying, you're actually, and a lot, a lot of people know this, a lot of people don't, when you get that good, hard burst on there, that hot oil, you're actually sealing everything in and the fish actually cooks by steaming. It's not the grease. After you get that sear on the outside or that, that crispy coating started, you're sealing everything in and it's actually a steaming process that finishes up the, the cooking. All right, we're 345. I'm gonna give it a little bump on the temperature, but I think we will be dropping in the fryer probably in about three minutes. Tonight, we are using canola oil. Um, that's a good question about the oil. Go ahead and discuss that while this warms up. So what you're looking for in your frying oil is what's called a high smoke point. And that is the temperature that the oil can get to before it starts to smoke, scorch, and get you that burnt taste. So canola oil, <laughs> is a good one. Uh, a lot of people use peanut oil, but when cooking for the masses, you never know if somebody out there might have a peanut allergy. So while we use that a few, uh, probably 10 years ago now, where's the time go? Um, we've actually, a lot of times, I'll go down to a, a great Arkansas company down in Stuttgart and Riceland, and I think a few others are starting to produce it now they make a rice oil that has a really high smoke point. Um, so it's, it's great for frying. You can use it multiple times. It's not one of those situations where you're going to have to throw your, your oil out after the first use. Will you not be mad? Go ahead. I don't really know about that. I hadn't seen it. Well, okay. You know nothing. All right. It's starting to smell kind of good over here. I don't know what. You really got going on over oh, there. Them. But we've got some, some peppers and some onion going over here with some butter. And go ahead and get our etouffee started. 
Yeah, I'm just dumping in the package, taking those shortcuts. We had a question come in, Will. Who taught you how to fish? Who taught me how to fish? That, that was my dad. I always spent a lot of time in the outdoors with my father, uh, hunting, fishing, and that's just kind of where I got my start, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Go ahead and tell us where you're from, Will. Where'd you grow up? Um, originally from Cabot, uh, just right outside of Lone Oak here. Uh, born and raised, and then started with the Game and Fish Commission in college, internship program with the Nature Center in Little Rock, and then went on here to the hatchery, and then started full time, and then ended up in education again, and getting to teach my passion, which now it's it's cooking, fishing, and fish and wild game. That's one of my favorite favorite things to teach. All right, well, if you're done talking about yourself, I'm going to go ahead and get this fish in. So hit. you want to knock off a little bit of this uh, extra breading because if that breading settles to the bottom, it's going to help scorch that oil, and that's something that we're not looking for. And when you're putting in anything into a fryer, you want to lay it down away from you. So as you can see, looks a little bit like a rib. That's where the name comes from. <coughs> oh, we're, we are perfect here. Will, you're going to be in trouble, brother. You get that pop on there, Morgan? Okay, good. So, now that we've got these going in, we are going to put together our slaw. Oh, God. And get the, get the griddle going over there. And before you know it, it'll be time to eat. And I know that's why Morgan's here. I know you are. All right, that's all of them. All right, we've got our our HFA mix mixed in with our butter. We've browned it up. Uh, at this point, you can use broth or just water. Usually, well, usually I don't know if you're going to bring HFA mix when you're camping, but you do normally have water with you, so that's what we'll go with. Stir it in. I like to try to do one one dish or one pan dishes if I can, but we're going to use a couple dishes today. Uh, these propane cookers have come a long way, though, and it's a great tool for cooking uh, at camp. You got to be careful sometimes of the smoke. But we're right. getting getting some good flavors going over here now. Oh, JJ's got time. Yep, going it's time on. To, uh, we ain't got time for you, baby. What are we fixing to do here? All right. We're gonna lay these um, whole crappie right here on the griddle. Oh, Morgan's getting that sizzle. <laughs> and we're just gonna let those sit on there and flip them about five minutes. It really depends on your uh, your thickness. There's a few on here that are some uh, some pretty good ones. This one that I'm struggling to get my lime wedge in. He may be done in three. But we're going to let those get going. And Curtis is working up on our slaw right now. Pretty simple. We got that prepackaged deal. And he's chopped up what we got? Cilantro, lime. We're going to do some jalapenos. Oh man, we got a recipe. Um, yeah, cilantro, lime juice. Salt, cumin, black pepper, little green onions, and jalapeno. And we will be, oh wait, we don't have any liquor. We're gonna throw a little sour cream in there to bring it all together. Like JJ said earlier, we're gonna push these recipes out to everybody through email. So don't worry about trying to jot it down. JJ, oh, yeah. can you talk a little bit about some fire dips? Yeah. Oh, the fire dips? Yeah, I mean, I probably need to look at these anyway. Um, you know, not to try to push products or anything like that, but this, uh, this tool right here is pretty awesome. Um, we're using it tonight as, as a fryer, but it's a, it's kind of a walk shaped, um, vessel. And if you don't have oil in it, um, man, what all have we cooked in this? Fajitas are amazing in it. I've done breakfast in it. Um, 
I mean, it can it can get bacon there in a hurry. And then you got all that bacon grease in the bottom. Did you see your whole duck breath? Searing duck breath? Oh, man. I mean, I know we're not – we're talking about wild game here, but – Have you done a steak in one of these, Will? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's kind of the beauty of this fire disc is the middle is smoking hot. And then as things finish up, you can kind of move it out to the outside. That's why it was so good on fajitas and things like that. It's good in breakfast. And this fryer, it's evenly heating. So, any idea of the cost? Um, hopefully, it's on sale for Black Friday. I, I think they're maybe in the 250, 300 range. Will, you know? Base model probably around 300. It goes yeah. up a little bit from there, but it you can do everything in it yeah. when you're camping. So, it, it's real portable. Yeah. We're showing a lot of these um, different techniques, and a lot of them can be accomplished right here. The same with the, the Camp Chef double burner. You know, you can put Dutch ovens on it, you can fry on it. We've got that grill top on there. I mean, there's we've come a long way since all we had was a Coleman stove and a, and a pointy stick. I can tell you that. Well, luckily, my buddy Will over here has a video that we are going to try to finish up, and we're going to push that out. So, yeah. it'll be on Cooks Lake Facebook. We'll page. probably whenever we get it out, it'll be on the Cooks Lake Facebook page, as long as as well as probably the Virtual Nature Center. Yeah. Uh, this carp right here was just one a carp of opportunity. We were fishing, and it jumped right into the boat, and so I would take advantage of it and make a video and cook them up. They are really delicious. Uh, what's also delicious is this bait that Curtis had left over from fishing the other day, this shrimp. So we're going to go ahead and season it up a little bit before we add it to our, our HFA. I like layers of flavor. Uh, so I like to season, season everything that goes into my dish. So we'll, we'll season it up. We've got our HFA on low. We're going to add our shrimp and just let it simmer while we get ready to to start our drum, and it's about time to check on our bass as well. I think our uh, carp ribs are just about done. And as you can see here, we're looking for that golden brown color. And, and a lot of that depends on the meal that you put on there. Uh, in a pinch, I've used white cornmeal before and it does not look the same as yellow cornmeal when you're frying fish. So, you know, you just, uh, you need to know what you're working with, but yellow cornmeal should give you this nice golden brown. And if you go for that color with white cornmeal, uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, tough and dry. But we're going to go ahead and start taking this up. Find my small pieces here. You know, and that's another tip for when you're frying fish. You want to, to keep your pieces in, uh, pretty uniform because of the cook speed on that. As you can see, I'm pulling up my small ones first, kind of picking through these because this guy right here takes a little bit more time than those little ones. So we're going to let him stay until we get the rest of these pulled out. So Morgan is your favorite fried? Is that is that your go-to? Okay. All right. Well, I may leave this uh, on low, and if I've got find any more fish over there, maybe Will's mysterious uh, saltwater fish. <laughs> maybe we'll uh, we'll do a fry on that. All right. We've probably been on what now? About 20 minutes, maybe. Always like to look at my watch when I'm cooking. I try to go off of time, but. Oh, when you're digital watch. Yeah. Uh, when you're working with actual fire, though, times can vary, and not every fish is going to be the same size. So what I'm doing now, I'm going to go ahead and just look and just see where we're, where we're at. Uh, it is hot. Oh, we still, we still got a pretty good little ways to go. We're going to go ahead and put the fish a little more over the flame. What are you opening up now, JJ? Well, since we're 
since uh, since I pull my fish out over here, and I've got to keep a, a pretty close eye on these uh, crappie. I mean, can we get a plane flying over? What's going on here? That's, oh, that's Ronald County Air Force. Right. Um, I've got half the grill open that I'm going to be using to warm up my tortillas here in a little bit. I remember a recipe for it's a it's a play on Mexican street corn. So I figure I'm going tacos. I got the cilantro rice. Maybe put a side dish of a seared or roasted off corn. Mix that up with the avocado. Um, may throw a little cilantro in there. I like cilantro. Curtis, not so much. But you know, Will's talking about bait over there. I don't know if anybody's been trout fishing, but it's a pretty good bait when you're trout fishing too. So there's lots of uh, uses in the kitchen for some of that leftover grocery bait, as we like to call it in the game. All right, so I'm gonna drain the water off this and put it right on the uh, flat top. That ought to sizzle. Oh, it's gonna sizzle. Speaking of sizzling, we're starting to get hot over here. Oh God, Morgan, keep up with it. We're about to do a technique called blackening. And to do that, you're gonna want a hot skillet. You're gonna wanna do this outside uh, because if you do it correctly, you're gonna create quite a bit of smoke. Hey, and once again, I got, I got some butter going into a hot cast iron. We're gonna go to where it's starting to even brown. If we catch fire, well, that gives you some flavor. About how much butter was that? Uh, about this much. Okay, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> it was a chunk, uh, as I like to call it, a chunk of butter. But that's hot. You can tell that's real hot. The fish, you want it dry. If it's wet, you're not going to get a good sear on it. But you do want your fish cold. If you start with warm or room temperature fish, you're also not going to get a good sear. So here we go. I can hear that. A little bit of sizzle. And we're going to go probably start with about three minutes per side, and then we're going to flip it, uh, put it to the side, let it rest for a little bit while we do the other ones, and we'll be ready to finish up our dish. Is that the drum? This is the drum. This is uh, some White River drum, and we got some Cash River drum. Similar, but it's not. Similar. It's a, it's a play off of red fish But different. That's right. I get it. And that's uh, one thing that we need everybody to remember. Yeah, come on over here, Morgan. Um, a lot of these recipes, so we're doing a, a sear on a flat top here. Will's doing blackened. Um, there's a lot of different heat sources out here. I could do the same thing with these fish on a grill. I could do it in a skillet over there. You can put these in the oven. It's the same with that foil packet. The foil packet can go right into your oven. You don't have to be camping to, to cook awesome meals like this. Super approachable, you know, the oven works great. You can do it inside. There's lots of home products that you can use. You can put some of this stuff on your, on your patio or in your backyard. So just because a recipe says, you know, this is for grill, you can take the same thing. You can you can do it with fillets. It doesn't have to be whole fish. So many options. It's it's really about making a recipe your own and and suiting it to to your own taste. Well, even if it's from a package. Even if it's from a package. <laughs> okay. All right. So Curtis is he's got some avocados cut up. We're, we're searing off the, the corn, and we're going to mix all that together here in a little bit. May, I may turn up the heat on this side. Oh, wow. Can you hear that sizzle? That's the sound of flavor. Now, how do you know when that corn's going to be ready? Well... I mean, we've, we've stolen enough stuff from uh, Food Network and the Cooking Channel right now that um, I, may, I may quote another one, brown food tastes good. So one thing that you want, especially the blacking on this corn, you're wanting a really, a really good sear on this stuff because that sear is gonna have a lot of flavor in it. 
So I'm going to wait till it starts to turn. I'm not going to say black. We don't want little uh, charcoal nuggets here, but we're, we're going to want it to have some color. Yellow is not, it'll be a secondary color here in a minute. How's your fish doing there? Fish is doing good. These small pieces, we've lost our lime out of that one. Uh, the small pieces are starting to get there, but I like it a little bit darker, so that's why I turned the heat up, and, and we're going to get a really good char on this. And that's one of your benefits. I think Will might have talked about it on his uh, foil packet, but one of your benefits of whole fish is you've got a lot more uh, leeway in what you're doing. It's a little bit more forgiving. So if you just had a fillet out here, it'd be really easy to overcook it and start drying it out. But that skin's going to hold in your, your moisture and give you a little bit of a couple of minutes, you know, grace period. What are you looking for done this, sir? Well, we want it to easily pull off the bone. Okay. So, we're going to get this going. Exactly. <laughs> no, back it up. How's that? Man, I think we're getting the namesake here. I think it's looking blackened. Oh, yeah. Almost burnt, but... No, this is this is a drum, not char. <laughs> no, that that's gonna be flavor though. A lot of that is from the seasoning. That's what what blackening seasoning does is give a a dark color to it. Uh, so we'll cook another about three minutes on this side, and we'll be done with the drum. How are we doing on questions? Don't you talk about your first fishing experience? First fishing experience, man. I, I'm going to say first. Uh, I mean, I, I might have slipped off to the creek at, at the house and on a bucket with a cane pole, but um, the, the memories that really stick out to me are, you know, my, my uncle had a camper. He'd go up. I'm from West Arkansas, you know, God's country. And we got lakes everywhere. So they, they really like to do a, a little summertime tradition of going camping at the lake. And, you know, they may go out in the boat. I didn't always get to go out in the boat. I got a little bit upset. But I could just sit there on the bank, fish. We'd all catch something. And then, and then bringing it in, preparing it, and then and cooking a meal just like this with, with friends and family. And that's what a lot of this is, is, is just connecting and, and being with the ones that you love and care about. How's that fire pit going? <laughs> Are we just checking? It's doing good? No, I didn't, I didn't forget about it. Uh, I don't need to blacken that bass, uh, but we just checked it. it. It's fine. We're about to go ahead and pull these off, and that's what we'll do. We've got a pan. You can even see, probably not from there, but the fish are starting to flake and be white. We'll go ahead, pull these off. And I'll go ahead and even just show you it starts to flake. Drum is actually a really white, flaky fish. Uh, a good texture. Works great for this method. Not as great for frying, but also works really good for doing fish tacos with. Uh, and I'll even do it in a full pack in the oven sometimes. It's, it's just really delicious. Were you fishing for drum well, or did you catch it back to You know, I, I normally don't fish for <laughs> drum, uh, but there's several water bodies in Arkansas that's full of them. They put up a great fight, and I'm going to show you. They're really good table fare as well. Yeah. It, you thought it was a 10-pound bass, right? I, I thought it was a 25-pound bass. <laughs> What's going on with the slaw over there? Uh, Curtis is going ahead and putting in a little uh, oh, fancy yeah. cheese. I think that's oh. uh, – what is that, Curtis? Coteja? Co what? Queso fresco. Oh, oh, well, we couldn't find that in Lone Oak. We couldn't get the fanciest. So uh, we do what we can, uh, what we can find. But he's going to go ahead, throw in those avocados, cilantro, little red onion, some jalapenos, of course, lime juice. And we're going to let this corn sear off, and it'll be ready to, to mix together and let all those flavors marry together. Whoa! <laughs> Come and this is why you cook this outside. <laughs> now we know what's going 
you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna give that a minute. Uh, you might wonder what to do in this case. You don't throw water on it. Uh, the best thing we can really do is either put a lid on it or just let it go out on its own. Uh, it happens. You're cooking outside. You're using real hot fire, real hot pans. Part of it. Just be real careful. Always keep fire extinguisher close by. And we're not going to add any more fish to that right this minute. We'd like to remind you that if you uh, if you if you like this program that you're seeing tonight, uh, please consider buying a, a hunting or fishing license. That's how we support uh, these these type of programs. Yeah. Yeah. Show. Yeah. Show us how that. Show us how that's done, Will. Well, I'm glad my wife packed me some flour. I guess. <laughs> Always come prepared. We make gravy now. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I really want this gravy, but that does work. Just like that, the fire is out. That, that was a good, good tip. Who was that from? Amanda. That was from my wife. Well, thank you, Amanda. <laughs> now I'll come home without being burnt. How are we doing over here? Oh, uh, we're about to put the corn over and we're gonna turn this fish. Getting close. We're getting close. Are you hungry yet, Morgan? <laughs> you want some of this burnt flour? <laughs> I think you uh I think you turned off my, my sugar over here, Will. Yeah. But Dyer, you, you get me pretty close here. You can see the black sear that we've got on this fish. That's what we're looking for. That's why that skin is gonna help you out because it's so forgiving. You get that sizzle, Morgan? Morgan. Morgan. Oh, the sizzle. <laughs> you can see how it's starting to flake off on that first side there. Maybe you can't because we're, uh, there you go. Skin's starting to separate. You got flaky, flaky fish. It helps when you turn the heat on, doesn't it? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I could probably put my hand on this right now. Whew. What are you gonna do with all that lettuce and peppers up there, Will? I, I just wanted it to make my table look a little fresher since uh, everything was in a package. But having everything in a package sometimes gives me more time to spend with friends and family instead of just standing over the fire cooking. I had everything ready to go, and honestly, we got our rice, and as you can see, I got that pan clean already, uh, nice and clean. Looks like it's a totally different pan. I, I, I think you're right, Morgan. Uh, we're just going to kind of finish off our rice here. Ideally, you would finish it off in the same pan you did the fish with, but I, I like these people. I don't want them to eat completely burnt rice. So we'll add in our rice. Maybe do a little lettuce wrap with it. Since we've got that lettuce left over. And you can cook your own, you can cook rice from scratch, but this is just a shortcut. We're supposed to be at camp anyway, right? Right, we're, we're at camp. You want time to be outside, you want time to be either hunting, fishing, hiking, uh, whatever you're doing. So the shortcut, what I enjoy. All this stuff we could have come off the river and cooked, right? That's right. We could do a shore lunch, a shore dinner, uh, be out all day long, and then come in, cook this real quick, and have time to relax. What are you doing now, JJ? Oh, it's time to warm up some tortillas. <laughs> what are you talking about? We're using uh, corn tortillas because that is the uh, is the only real tortilla. I mean, they don't use flour tortillas down in Mexico, and that's what we're going for is authenticity here. 
yeah, you're going to eat a corn tortilla. But you can, uh, I don't know if you can get the right angle on it, but I've got all these, uh, these crappie flipped. You got your sear. You can see how the flakiness of the white fish, I can just pull this fin off. So that's what you're looking for. You want, you want this fish to fall off the bone. We're not cooking competition ribs here. We're talking about just pull that bone away, get that meat off, pretty simple. And we will, we're gonna be there. It's gonna get there. Here, I'll, I'll, take, take, I'll take that. You want that? You yeah. Like that? <laughs> yeah. I'm not taking. That's good. good. Yep. I've got some flour if you'd like to try it next. <laughs> I'll pass. <laughs> we are making our crowd hungry. Well, I'm not sure that, uh, that we can feed people virtually but hopefully we've given them enough tools where they can this is something very approachable for them and that they're going to try it at home but we're fixing to get some stuff plated up will you plate yet uh, i'm almost there but they can pay. cool down a little bit so uh jim doesn't burn his mouth when he gets to try it here in a minute uh our rice is about about ready so we are about ready to plate we're about to pull our bass off and man we're getting close, aren't we? What's this tortilla doing on the ground, JJ? What? Well, I, I only uh, put perfect products out there, so. Uh, I thought you were trying to feed Blue. The dog. Where's the Blue? <laughs> He's around Every here. Every camp has a good camp dog. Yeah. Well, that's, that's probably true. You mean? Got the sizzling bass over here. Oh, yeah. You want this? Oh, I think I'm like it. Oh, yeah. We are about into plating mode. That's the part we're waiting on. Oh, man. Is he coming after me? <laughs> You can serve it right in the pool. No sense in taking it out. We'll let that cool a little bit. We ready to plate up over here? Are, are you anywhere near ready to plate? Hey, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We're working hard. Got some beans that we had set before. You didn't even know about these, Will. Oh. It's a brisk November 10th, isn't it? it is. Yeah, it's balmy. I mean, oh, it's so cold. I wish I wish we would have made some uh, fish chowder tonight on this nice, nice cool night we're having, or a nice fish boil. But yeah. instead, just just tell them what the temperature is in Celsius. That way, uh, it sounds cold. I I don't do Celsius. Oh, okay. All right. What do you got there? So we got some rice. I'm gonna start with a bed of rice. Top it with our our red fish. Our redfish, it's a drum. It is not redfish. Oh my God. <laughs> Man, I keep thinking redfish because this is a recipe that I've had with redfish several times, uh, but it works really good with freshwater, their freshwater cousin, the American drum. We got a plate out here. Uh oh, beat you to the pass. All right. Yeah, and see, I'll tell you right now, one of the beautiful things about how versatile some of these recipes are. I just threw for a little bit of color and pop on that plate, threw us a little coleslaw that we were, we had it for our uh, fish tacos, but all you had to do is change a few ingredients in that, and boom, it's uh, the perfect accompaniment. Who hasn't Who had cares? fried fish, beans, and coleslaw? There's all we need is a pickle, and it's like we're at a, uh, a real restaurant, right? Maybe a slice of purple onion. Golly, do we have some left? Uh-oh. Oh, oh no, I was already fighting before you knew it. You're done? You got a two for one. Yeah, I'm oh, done. Hey. 
You got tacos ready? Uh, well, we got tortillas ready. Okay. All right, go ahead and pull these off. We don't need those right now. I got two chips and not even Let's see. Let me. I can, I can do it on here. I can do it on here. Not a problem. Just a dab. We're just going to show how flaky this fish should be. Hopefully. See how that just pulls off? And hopefully you can get real tight there, Dyer, and you can see these bones. All you're gonna do, sorry I moved on you when I told you to get real tight, is you just pull it off and all those bones stay right there and you got fish to throw down on your tortilla that I know you can't see, but we're gonna get it plated up real nice and we'll be to the table here in three minutes. All right, Will, we gotta kill three minutes. Tell us a joke. <laughs> I, I don't do too good with jokes. Um, you know, I'm not usually speechless, but for once, you got me there. I knew I'd get you somehow. <laughs> <buddy>. <laughs> oh, man. You know what, though? One thing about cooking, so I had that pan ready to go for the rest of my drum. Uh, you saw what happened. So, one nice thing, though, we've already got a fire going with the grate. Be versatile. You probably won't see the end result of this, but we're going to cook this drum fillet just right over the fire. It's going to sizzle. We've got some, some pecan. Uh, pecan is a really good flavor for fish if you're going to smoke fish or grill fish. Pecan and apple are two really, really good flavors. So JJ's got, he's almost there. Let's see what oh, we yeah. got. All right, I want you all to see this perfect side right here. I mean, we have pulled all the meat off of that, and all you are left with is the bones. So I just flip that over and take this spatula until this starts running from me and run it up. Of course, when I get the camera over here, it doesn't go as perfect. And you can just flake that fish right off. So we are there. We're going to make it. As you can see here, Got that whole perfect side that we didn't get on the camera, but you just throw a little bit of fish on there and then you top it with your favorite toppings. As you saw us make, we have our coleslaw. You can either put that on or you can put it on the side. We're gonna to top each one of these a little bit differently. We're gonna go with our mango fresh salsa on one. Now, I'm not going to tell Morgan this because she doesn't like hot stuff, but we slipped a little hot pepper in there because, in my opinion, if you're going to have sweet, you better have that heat. So we've got the mango on one. And even though this is a side, you can top with that. All you got right there is seared off corn, avocado, a little cilantro, lime juice, and some red onion. And we are, oh no, we got to put a little garnish here. Oh, oh my gosh. I don't think Blue wants to eat that. I'm coming, I'm coming. It's really good uh, camera angle on the back there. A little lime and, oh, wait a minute. What is this that I pulled out of the uh, ice chest earlier? A simple crema to go across the top. This is a chipotle crema. And it'll just give you a little bit of uh, creaminess and a little bit of spice. So we're taking it. Oh, oh God. You want it? Oh God. Here we go. I'll take it. Will, are you out here? Oh. Uh, now I'm back here cooking the shrimp. Wow. So remember to, to vote on who do you think pulled off the masterpiece. Woo! I'm not gonna lie, that, uh, that drum, I mean, uh, redfish, I mean, what is it? <laughs> it looks pretty good. It is a drum and it is from Freshwater. Okay. But uh, uh, those tacos look, those look good. So that's just silver carp, I mean, yep. that's. Yeah, that's silver carp. It looks like any other uh, filet that you would get in, in a restaurant. 
It looks good. So how do you eat it? Uh, very carefully because there's bones in it. <laughs> so you see all the dishes here? Well, I'm pretty impressed. I, I am too. So do we have any questions? I know people are busy voting. We got any questions left out there? Is it time to eat yet? We're getting there. Yeah. Questions are pouring in. No. <laughs> <laughs> my poll won't work. Uh-oh. So I just tell people to vote. Vote in the chat. So we've got one vote for Taco Bell so far, but, but Team Pet has a vote too. Oh, boy. It's a behind the scenes. Wow. Wow. OK. All right. I get it. I get it. I know we've said a lot of things here. We've thrown a lot at you. We, we've replicated so many things from Food Network <laughs> that uh, we're probably going to get shut down. Uh, luckily, tomorrow's a holiday, That's so right. they can't, surely they can't shut the state down on a federal holiday, right? Mm -hmm. But we've got, we've got a lot of recipes that are going to be coming at you. We've showed you a few things here. Hopefully, we've shown you versatility that you can use any of these cooking elements to, to accomplish these goals. And in the end, I think as long as we're out there, we're hunting, we're fishing, we're, we're eating what we, what we get, then, then we're all winners in conservation and, and making this a, a better place, right? That's we're right, not, that's you know, right. A little locavore movement. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that are really trying to source their foods from, from right there where they are. I mean, some of this stuff I pulled from the garden right there behind us. You can't yeah. see it. It's dark. And I, pulled, I promise there's a garden back there. I pulled this from White River, which is basically in my backyard. Uh, it, you can't get much more local than that. Yeah, the crappie yeah. came from Lake Conway. So. Uh, we're getting closer, winners. Mm. Wow. We but everybody. when we make dishes like this, I think we're all winners. <laughs> At least okay. the ones that get to eat are going to be the winners. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think the, the people right here are the real winners because we got a lot of food to eat. We got the, the vote for the drum. Don't the drum. Yeah, you said one of the drums. The drum, you're not going to throw back anymore. <laughs> Great job, all. And we'll just say the FCC's presentation. Well, those we have, look amazing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go check it, Will. I'll sign us off. Yeah. Um, we just wanted to have fun tonight and, and show you all some approachable things. Next month, we're going to be doing a, a different kind of program. It's going to be on the 15th. Does that sound right? Yeah. yeah. Third Tuesday. That's what we normally do, but uh, I couldn't get this crew here on the opening week of dare season, so we ran it a week early. But next month, we're going to be talking about one of our great programs, the Fishing in the Natural State program. It's, it's a fantastic deal, especially for educators that might be out there, whether you're in formal education or scouts, 4-H, anything like that. It is a fantastic program for, for getting kids out there and even some adults and enjoying the great outdoors. So license because if you don't you're going to get a fine um <laughs> we're not talking about your wedding it's going to rain on saturday so <laughs> all right thank y'all and be safe out yep. there see you next month yep. hope to see you on the water <laughs>